Welcome! Today we will be talking about borderline personality disorder. Borderline personality disorder. Individuals with borderline personality disorder often have emotional liability. That means they are up and down with their emotions. They can be very anxious. They have separation anxiety or a chronic fear of abandonment. They can be depressed, impulsive, risk-taking behaviors, and hostile. They are one of the most well-known and dramatic of the personality disorders. They have severe impairments in functioning. They are unable to control their emotions or their impulsivity. So for example, someone hurts them in some way, they're going to go slash all their tires. They have unstable relationships, so they're breaking up, getting back together, breaking up, breaking up, breaking up. The hallmark of BPD, especially if we see it on an exam, is this self-injury and the emotional liability that up and down and also splitting is associated with BPD. Their emotional response is out of proportion to the circumstance. So for example, if you um, took a nap and someone with BPD was texting you and you didn't respond right away, all of a sudden, two hours later, they sent you 20 texts and they're yelling at you and they're mad at you and uh, you're the worst person in the world um, and they're breaking up with you. They have a pathological, they have a pathological fear of separation and intense sensitivity to perceived personal rejection. Once again, that high impulsivity there. Highly impulsive, they act quickly in response to emotions without considering the consequences. So for example, they may act out without thinking like, hmm, if I go set this guy's house on fire, I may end up arrested later. <laughs> um, their impulsivity often results in damaged relationships, right? If I go and smash all the windows because a guy hurt me and I smash all of his windows in his car, yeah, that's definitely gonna damage the relationship. Self-destructive behaviors are prominent, which means that they will often cut themselves. You'll see cutting marks here or inside their legs. They ha That's a negative coping strategy. They don't know how to cope effectively. So they may inflict uh, self-injurious behavior. So cutting, they may do promiscuous sexual behavior. Numbing with substances are common and may result in unintentional death. Causes of BPD can be often genetics, parental cruelty or neglect, incest or abuse. Individuals with BPD may have chronic suicidal ideation, so chronic thoughts of suicide, and they may appear very hostile or angry and irritable in relationships. Physical violence towards the partner may occur. They may engage in property damage, setting the house on fire, slashing tires, etc. And they may use splitting as their primary defensive coping style. So for example, when they first meet you, they love you, you're the best thing since sliced bread. But you do one thing, one little goof up, and it doesn't even have to be a big deal, and all of a sudden, you're the worst person in the world, and they absolutely hate you. Splitting is the inability to view both positive and negative aspects of the other person. You're either wonderful or a horrible person. And BPD is likely influenced by exposure to psychological, sexual, or physical trauma. These individuals will often seek out treatment for depression, anxiety, suicidal, and self-harming behaviors. You're likely to see frequent hospitalizations. Fortunately, this personality disorder seems to decrease with age. Here's a normal spectrum of thinking. Normal thinking, borderline thinking. With borderline thinking, it is polarized. All or nothing, good or bad. They may have feeling of emptiness, they may engage in risky behaviors such as reckless driving, unsafe sex, substance abuse, binge eating, gambling, or overspending. They have this void inside of them that they are trying to fill with something. Their intense feeling of abandonment often results in paranoia or feeling spaced out. And they idealize others and become close quickly. The best example I have of this is Pete Davidson. He has admitted that he does have BPD, and look at how he quickly idealized Ariana Grande, how quickly everything escalated. He asked her to marry him, and you see the fallout. They are often angry, sarcastic, or bitter. Once again, Pete Davidson, he is a comedian, and a lot of his humor is very sarcastic. 
People with BPD are like people with third degree burns over 90% of their bodies. They lack emotional skin. They feel agony at the lightest touch or movement. And remember, it's important to be empathic with these individuals because they may have experienced some type of trauma, something that we know nothing of, that has made them act out in this manner. Assessment. When you are caring for these individuals, you want to assess for self-mutilation, self-harm, suicidal behaviors, gestures, or threats. If you see that someone is giving away all of their possession, that's often a suicidal gesture or behavior, giving away possessions. They, you will see that on exams and you'll see it in real life too, sadly. A lot of times individuals that have been contemplating suicide and finally are going to follow through with it, they will throw this big party. People come, this guy is so happy and they have no idea that that's his going away party. They often have intense, unstable romantic relationships. Again, Pete Davidson went from Ariana Grande right away. Now he's in another relationship with someone else. And the, the relationships just tend to be chaotic. Self-assessment. Be aware of one's own stress response to patient behaviors. It's important to not lose your patience with people with BPD. It is a very challenging um it is challenging to take care of individuals with BPD, but remember, we must always remain professional and not judgmental. Here are a few NANDAs for BPD. I will leave these here for you to read on your own, but always number one for mental health is going to be risk for suicide related to, risk for self-directed violence. That is the priority. Safety is the priority. Signs and symptoms. Do they have bites, cuts? Have they ingested harmful substances? Have they inhaled harmful substances? Do they have self-inflicted burns? Do they have a history of mutilation? Oftentimes you look at their skin and all this is all marked up. It's almost like paper thin and the slightest thing will make them bleed because they've cut themselves so much. They can be very manipulative. They will use guilt, guilt trips to get their way or they will act out almost throwing a tantrum to get their way. So be very careful with that and don't be taken in by that. Planning and implementation. Be aware of manipulative behaviors such as flattery, seductiveness, and instilling guilt. You want to communicate that with them in a straightforward fashion. And when behavioral problems emerge, you calmly review the therapeutic goals. You want to remain neutral. And if they do, for example, hurt themselves, cut themselves, you will dress the wound in a matter of fact manner. You're not going to say, oh my gosh, what did you do? I can't believe you cut yourself. You're giving them negative attention for a negative behavior. And you may instruct the patient to write down the sequence of events leading up to the injury as well as the consequences before the staff will discuss the event. Remember, they often don't know how to, um, they often act without thinking of the consequences. So if we can make them in retrospect write down what led up to the events and what are the consequences now, we can get them in the habit of thinking of consequences. Treatment for BPD, we have the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which are antidepressants, but they also help with anxiety disorders. Anticonvulsants, aka your mood stabilizers, so if the person with BPD has tendencies more towards bipolar and we need to even out their moods a little bit, we can give them some lithium or Depakote. Naltrexone is an opioid receptor antagonist, and this helps reduce self-injurious behaviors. We also have second generation antipsychotics that may help control anger and brief psychosis. The important thing with BPD is to be consistent and use a team approach. Don't give in to the splitting. Don't say, don't talk bad about staff members with your client. I know it sounds common sense, but you'd be surprised it happens. The person with BPD will be talking about another nurse. Let's say I'm the nurse and she'll be talking to Cynthia about me and Cynthia will be like, yeah, Bridget's the worst. I can't believe she does this and does that. So don't feed into it. Therapy can be very effective for BPD. BPD is very difficult to treat, but cognitive behavioral therapy, it may help them identify and change their inaccurate perceptions. There's also dialectical behavior therapy, which is what um, Pete Davidson is currently doing, and schema-focused therapy. Pete Davidson is currently in dialectical behavior therapy, and this is what he says about having BPD. He said, it's steps, it's thought processing. You have these thoughts, you have these feelings, you have these urges, you're going to freak out. Try waiting it out 10 minutes. Try going for a walk. 
to his fear of abandonment. When people say they're leaving and coming back, I get a really big fear that they're not coming back. So once again, if you know someone with BPD, if you have BPD, I do encourage seeking therapy, being patient with yourself or with the other person. It is, it is treatable, there is hope, and there are things that you can do. And if you're watching this in regards to nursing, when you see it on an exam, be weary of manipulative behavior. Uh, borderline, you're going to see self-injurious behavior and splitting. Those are the two main things that you need to remember with this. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button.